and we are live what is going on with everybody it's your boy eric aka young god coming to you live in the green dungeon giving it to you real raw rugged and before we get into this interview just want to say that uh last time i did an interview on this computer definitely got messed up so we're gonna pray that this don't get messed up if it does then hey man i don't know what else i can do at this point but got somebody on the other line let him introduce stuff man who we got uh lorenz tate the third <laughs> The Dirty Mac King. It's like, nah, uh, it's Thelonious Martin. What's good, y'all? Hey, man. Don't know if you have been subscribed to my channel for a very long time, but I interviewed Thelonious, I think, like, three years ago. It was a very long time ago. And it was a phone interview. It was supposed to be a FaceTime interview, but I think he might have had, like, Metro PCS Wi-Fi or something like that. Um, <laughs> it was something going on because the Wi-Fi was tripping. It was somebody Wi-Fi tripping, so we had to switch to the, the audio. But, hey. Got the man himself, man, with the black power uh, pick going oh, no, on. Yeah, man. always, man. Always got to have the guy that I mean. You feel me? Black yeah. power, black lives matter. You got the uh, you got the Philadelphia beard going on, man. That's <laughs> all my girl, Philly John. <laughs> <laughs> Philly niggas be having like beers, like fucking like twelve inch beers. Some shits are uh, shits are crazy. Shout to Philly, man. Shout, shout to Philly. But uh, yeah, man, how you doing today? I'm good, man. Uh, yesterday, I, I put on the Isley Brothers and cleaned up the crib, organized the sneaker closet and whatnot, brought mad peace and serenity to the crib. So this morning, I woke up, took my vitamins, drank a lot of water, started making beats. And uh, yeah, today's a good day, man. It's a good day. Hey, man, I am uh, i don't know if you would do this or not, but you damn near made Beat of the Year on Instagram a couple minutes ago. I slid in there for a couple minutes and... uh. That beat was crazy. I don't know what you was on. I don't know if you was on some drugs or some shit to make that beat. That beat is insane. You know, I'm sober right now. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm out of weed, so <laughs> we'll rectify that today. And uh, yeah, nah, it's uh, it's amazing what you can do when you clear your clear your space mm. and like kind of like it affects your mental. You don't really realize sometimes you can be sitting. It's funny because my mom nags me about this. Whenever I clean up the whole crib, I never clean up the studio. Like the studio will stay like the same unless something drastic falls in here or some shit like that. Yeah. But like I'm very superstitious. That's the only thing I'm superstitious about. I don't like moving around the feng shui in the studio too much because constantly producing heat, so I don't want to fuck with it, right? But the rest of the crib, living room, bedroom, kitchen, all that has to get clean for the rest for the rest of the auras. Yeah. And whatnot come together and, and produce a certain energy within the house that's, you know, that's inducive to making fire music. So, yeah. What type of energy? Shout out to, shout out to moms. Now, what type of energy do you think you have? Like when the, when the house is dirty. Just you, just chilling. You just, I mean, you playing video games, scratching ass. It's like a lazy energy. Mm. When everything clean in the crib, you kind of like tiptoeing around. You're like, all right. I'm gonna make the bed. I'm gonna put this back in place. Cause the moment something out of place, you realize you like, ooh, this shit started to look messy. Yeah. So you're like, all right, man, let me just. It kind of keeps you on your toes. It kind of keeps you, uh, I mean, pr- like productive. Yeah, I definitely agree with that because it's definitely times where like I feel like just drained, and my room is also dirty. So I think that there's not a coincidence. It's it it, it coincides, man. They say if you make your bed, you, you're gonna have a better day. Although I, I'm not a fan of the made bed, me neither. All. I can't. I can't. I'll I'll roll out of bed. The cover be folded perfectly, so I will get back in that motherfucker and just <laughs> fold that bitch back over. It's, so I'll be pressed. I'm like, oh, damn, I don't want to do this. But you know, it's it's like being an adult. It's, it's doing shit you don't want to do. <laughs> Wait, man. I kind of tiptoeing back to the to the beat, man. That beat was like, like I knew you was in your zone. And when I went on there, I was going to text you, but that thing was on live. And I seen how many of these, I was like, let me not text this nigga, because this nigga's in a complete, you was the, the, you doing the oh, Jay-Z yeah, head you, shit. You see the, the head not going crazy? <laughs> I'm zoning out, I might let out a woo or two or a shit, like real loud. It's, it's one of my favorite things. And honestly, it's cool to kind of like, I'll go back and watch my live and see me catch the groove and see like, okay, <laughs> that's what triggered that, yeah. and, you know. I be watching my I be watching my shit like it's game tape. <laughs> I'm a I'm a giant sports nerd, so like a lot of stuff I kind of related back to sports or sports analogies, or even kind of like study my shit like it's like it's game tape and kind of like peep certain things. So 
yeah, nah, I definitely found myself catching a groove. Uh, you know, it's one of those things, man. It's like a when NBA player gets hot and just keep knocking down shots. I know you like. I know you uh, make a lot of beats on Instagram. Like comparatively, I guess like to all the beats you've made, the one you made today, like how are you rank that up there? Because I've watched a lot of them, and that I thought that was like a special one. It's up there. I'm still trying to figure out who I might put on. That I, that's what I was who thinking. I, like. I couldn't. I couldn't think of nobody. And that's usually when I know I made some fire. Cause hmm. I'm like stuck. Or I'm like, oh. I don't even know who can rap on this. This shit can just stand on its own. Nah, that's one of them. That's one of the beats where it's like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like a like a, like a, some some shit on a J, a J Dilla album or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't even know if that yeah, needs yeah. vocals. You feel me? Like that was some that was a special ass beat, man. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, didn't want to interrupt that because you was in a, a whole different type of zone, man. It's like uh, I don't know. Like you said, I play a lot of sports, so like I just see niggas like getting in the zone. You don't want to go talk to a nigga like, hey, hey bro, uh, what, what type of shoes am I? Like, like, don't dude. even bother the nigga. MJ is in his bag right now. Don't even, don't even look at the nigga wrong. <laughs> nah, yeah, MJ might. Uh, I think it's a psychopath. I would definitely not try to uh, interrupt that. Talk to him while he dropping foot. It was to the point where niggas was scared to trash talk to the nigga because it might result in him dropping a hella buckets. Bro, or your career might be over. That nigga ended Muggsy Bo's career. Like that nigga, with confidence was a uh, was, was nah. stunt. Bro, what do you call him? Like a midget or something? <laughs> He used to call him a short. Uh, the the rumor is he called him a short midget bitch. Oh my gosh, man! So is that shoot that shit? You short bitch? Fuck! Like oh <laughs> damn! He getting that super disrespectful. I'm fucking with it though. I don't I don't get why that would 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 mess a nigga up that bad. I don't feel like that was that crazy. You you gotta remember though, this nigga MJ to niggas was then he was called Black Jesus, like. Like niggas look at him like you. It's certain people when they walk in the room, they give up a certain aura. You can feel the greatness coming off a motherfucker. Like I mean, I met Madlib. I met I've, I've met Madlib twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was there for the Pinata show that came to Chicago. Me and Freddie are cool. So I got a chance to to be backstage and meet Madlib. And this nigga walked in the room, and it I swear to God, it felt like the nigga floated in that motherfucker. Mind you, we in a green room at a at a at a venue. If you've been to a show, if you've had the, the pleasure, this ain't really a pleasure of being backstage and interacting with artists in the green room. Green rooms aren't really that fancy. They're not, it's not like a hotel room attached to the venue. It's a room where they're like, look, y'all can drink water, change clothes. Yeah, da, da, da. it's not really fancy, whatever. This motherfucker walk, he had a wine glass. I'm trying to figure out where the fuck he got a wine glass from. He had a wine glass, he had some red wine, big chunky turquoise jewelry. It's like a shaman almost, and you yeah. like he, he looked very out of place, but you felt his energy as he floated into the room, and all the producers and like music nerds in the room kind of, oh shit, mad lit. And I got a chance to chop it up with him a little bit, but the second time I met him, I was opening for him during like a pitchfork weekend, like DJ gig, and you know he's one of those people that you see him and he just gives off it's, it's a radiant like moth like moth to light kind of like glow. You're like, oh shit, it's mad lit. Yeah. Yoshi, what's up? Like, <laughs> so yeah, nah. You can you can feel that energy coming off of people. And it's like something you don't want to like bother or like mess with. And so someone like MJ, like niggas idolizing. So someone like MJ being like, man, you mother, like you. Oh, God damn, I fucked up. I, I upset. I upset the god. Like. I see why Muzzy Bose was, was <laughs> shot after that. Now that's crazy. Is is that anybody? Have you ever met anybody else that like had you kind of just like, whoa, that's crazy I'm with this nigga or this, this woman? Um, I think Mad Lib over everybody in terms of like energy. I've met all my idols. And all my idols have been cool. Just been cool. Shout out to Uncle Just. Just plays. Uh, Alchemist is super cool. It's really. He's a really good guy, man. Uh. Those are the, like those are my idols. Mm. I've met them all. They've all cool. They pay respect to me, and it's like I, that shit is love. It's uh, they usually say don't meet your idols. It's usually dickheads. Yeah, they just, you idolize. You hold them up to a certain regard. <clears throat> and for me, it's kind of like not necessarily I hold them in such high regard. Cause I understand these people are humans, but it's like these people are very influential to how I do things or why I do things. And it's a certain level of respect. But I also know that I'm I'm cold with the shit. So it's yeah. not like I'm 
looking at them like, oh my God, you're so amazing. I can never. It's like, nah, G, like, I'm trying to be better than you. It's, it's like, I'm trying to yeah. elevate my shit. Like, y'all inspired me to be better, and I want to surpass what they've accomplished so that I can pass the baton to the next generation. So it's like a, a mutual respect and admiration, but it, it comes with a, a slight tinge of competition. It's like, I'm not like so starstruck by niggas that I'm like, oh my God. It's like, nah, I'm 27 fucking years old. Like, I pay my rent off this shit. Make classics. I, I can hold my own. <laughs> like, well, no, I, I think it's, those are respectable people to, like, be like that with. Because I had somebody call me yesterday. Nigga said, uh, nigga said, bro, guess who I was just around? And I was like, who? Nigga said, boonk. That shit was crazy. <laughs> yeah, nah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not someone I'm like, oh, my God, like, yo, boonk here. Like, it's like, ugh, boonk here. <laughs> like, I don't disrespect to him, but it's like. I mean, you see people get famous for like stupid shit, and you're like, Ugh, like it's not something I'm gonna be like, oh my god, yeah, he's here. It's like, nah, geez, like, nah, <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah that's that's, a, that's not yeah. it. <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy to see. I feel like people. Uh, I don't know. How can I say? It? People want to be like just in the limelight. So if they see anybody with any type of recognition that they're around, it's like, oh my gosh, oh, this, yeah. this person got three hundred thousand followers on Instagram. This is people surreal. Are, uh, people are more to that flame. People yeah. want that recognition. They they want to be around light in any way, shape, or form, even if it's very short lived fame. Yeah. Or recognition that shit is like it's fleeting it's not really something that's long lasting anything that's real remains so if you surround yourself with some shit that's real you'll find that light that you're looking for it might take a little longer but it's going to remain for a very long time that light bulb not going out <laughs> facts and uh hey also shout out to that nigga boom because he's from my city and that nigga he uh changed up man that nigga be wearing suits yo changed the whole life I salute that man that's just crazy bro that's crazy <laughs> That tattoo removals, like that process, gonna be long and hard. But I know that shit hurt, like, boy. Ah, oh, gosh, why? Yeah, I heard that shit hurt. Man, you got a lot of tattoos, and I'm pretty sure that the last step to the the, the life change around be removing some of those. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a lot. <laughs> That's it, crazy. That nigga just said, "Fuck it." Nigga just, I don't even know like how you how you go about getting that many tattoos in your face. Like, hey, like, that's like some shit, like. I don't know. Like, I had to be in a crazy place in my life to just be like, hey, man, I'm going to just... I had to be on a lot of drugs to Boy. get that many tattoos. But I got tattoos. I want more tattoos. But, like, the whole face, neck, nah. I My mama beat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, that's crazy. Um, But, yeah, I mean, and it's, it's kind of funny that we bring up Boom because he was doing, like, I guess, uh, stuff that people thought was humorous or whatever. But you are a nigga that's really funny to me. Like I follow you on Twitter, and you're really funny. Yeah, guy. And I don't have to jump into a aisle of Seven Eleven and knock over shit. <laughs> it's not necessary. <laughs> you go inside of a, a fucking beard grease store and just start knocking over the beard grease and shit like that. I mean, yeah, say nah, King Thelonious, not, that nigga. <laughs> that's not my mo or my style <laughs> whatsoever. I think observational comedy or just being witty is a lot more uh, rewarding. <laughs> I don't know. No. It's like, I, I, I never saw, like, physical comedy or things of that nature. Like, you know, shit that people do on the internet as funny. Like, it's not really, like, my thing. But, like, I love Chappelle. Yeah. I love, like, you know, shit. Even the Jamie, like, Jamie Foxx is fucking hilarious. Like, I don't know. I, I always like really smart comedy or, like, witty comedy or, like, kind of, like, you know, lunchroom shit where you roast a nigga. Like, yeah. <laughs> kind of shit niggas grew up with so it never was like a let me fucking terrorize people in public for laughs like nah like you, you can be funny in so many other ways but yeah nah I, it, it's funny it's like I remember one time uh, I went with my homegirl she was DJing this uh, store opening and I'm next to her she's DJing she was so like my homegirl so hard she was so election and shit she DJing somebody walks up I'm like I'm just sitting there where my friends DJ? And I don't really don't like going out like that. Where my friends DJ? I just stand by the DJ booth, chop it up with them, see what songs they playing, talk, shoot the shit. So dude walks up, so like, oh so hard, yo, you were selection, yada da da. Congrats, praising and giving big ups. He sees me, he's like, oh you're Thelonious. 
you're funny as hell on Twitter. Mind you, platinum, <laughs> one of the classics, all that. He was like, oh, yo, you're funny on Twitter. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> That shit had me dying on the inside. So I wanted to be like, hey, bro, like, you know I do music. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny as hell. But that's the kind of shit that make, like, makes me laugh. Like, that's the kind of shit that's, like, funny to me. Like... Not a, yeah, that's that's hilarious. Like that's the type of shit. Like you like you know the music, right? He's like, no, 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 no. You don't do music. You, you the nigga on Twitter. He's like, no, bro. <laughs> the weed memes, right? Um, yeah, bro. <laughs> that's hilarious. No, I, I honestly think like you should try to do something in comedy because, like I said, even the lunchroom roasting stuff. Like I, I don't think you probably remember this, but like when we did Facetime for like a brief ten seconds, you started roasting my bonnet. And it, I guess that was just like instinctual, like you just start going to my bonnet. Uh, yeah, I was, I was so sorry about that. That's literally it was it sticks. Like, no, I mean, <laughs> I am a I am a Florida nigga. Like, if you think I'm wearing a bonnet and niggas, like to be a Florida nigga, you gotta know how to roast, or you're just gonna be depressed all your life. Because if you, <laughs> hey, you, you're that going to like be bullied. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, oh, I'm from Chicago, G. So shit, niggas be fucking niggas up out here. If you can't <laughs> defend yourself in a rest session, it's it's funny because like me and my friends we talk about it all the time it's like if I uh, flame you up or like roast you or whatever it's 9 times out of 10 because I actually fuck with you yeah. like cause you don't want to like joke on some nigga that's like super insensitive you don't know yeah. and it gets awkward and like oh he's like you picking on this nigga it's like eh, nah, I don't want to do all that I'll flame up my man so coming out to like the crib with a ding- dingy white tee or some shit yeah. like that like boy you better take that hand me down white how you gonna hand me down white tee beloved like shit like that like it's never I don't know it's like I feel like uh it's almost like a form of friendship to to joke or bond at a certain level. Like, I ain't finna joke around some things I don't know. I yeah. don't know them niggas. <laughs> no, I feel you. I mean, I, like I said, that's something that you grew up doing. It's like a defense mechanism. Because if you grew up in public school in Florida and you don't know how to roast, you're literally going to be taking depression pills. You're going to be, you're gonna be, <laughs> you're gonna be sitting in timeout. <laughs> I'm going to be here telling it's right, crazy, I, I, man. I'll fuck with y'all later, but... And not in Chicago. I mean, I'm trying to think of Chicago niggas that I know. I, only Chicago nigga I've heard roast off the top of my head is, uh, I think, it's Chicago. I don't know if you know his name. He's been on Instagram. A nigga named Dontario Hudson, I think his name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, that nigga flamed Vic Mensa so hard, bro. Like, he walked up Dontario to Vic. Rufus. You seen that video where he walked up to Vic Mensa and just started killing this nigga? Dontario funny as hell. That nigga's hilarious, man. That nigga walked up to Vic Mensa. He had these boots on. Nigga said he had a, do you want to start a revolution boots? And that shit killed me, man. That nigga is he hilarious, man. Shout out to that nigga. But, uh, but yeah, I think you should look into that, man. I know you work with Adult Swim and stuff like that. I don't know if you can get in a, the fucking writing <laughs> bag or something. But you should, I mean, have you ever, like, seriously thought about that? I've taken stand-up classes. Mm. The whole time. Really? How's, like, what is that? I've never heard that before. What is that exactly? So it was just like I, I took these classes. It's a, a school called Second City. It's like for acting and like comedy here in Chicago. It's really big. Like a lot of like big names. Yeah. SNL alum people have like gone to that. And so they like teach you like, you know, basic mechanics of it and different styles of storytelling and whatnot. It was fun. I'd probably do it again, uh, uh go to an open mic or two when COVID let up. No, that's hard. Right. It's like my secret that's why I says in all my my bios, failing comedian. Like until I go do a a couple open mics, I actually like go do some time and stand up. I'll be a failing comedian. <laughs> and it's crazy because not only are you your funny guy, your production, bro. It's like I feel like I've been only interviewing, in my opinion, top tier producers this year, and Appreciate ha- had to put you in there, bro. You feel me? I've interviewed. You familiar with Budgie? Yo, Budgie's the homie. Crazy. Shout out to Budgie, man. Budgie crazy with the gospel samples. Bro, that, crazy nigga, with that nigga is insane, bro. He, he, I'll, I'm the, I mean, he's the reason that I know, um, what's the escape song? Uh, the, the, the run. Damn, what's the escape song I'm thinking about? Uh, 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 you know what I'm talking about? Damn, hold on, hold on. Uh, 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 you don't know what I'm talking about. These are terrible, these are terrible audio clues. I, I can't. <laughs> Escape, something about run. Uh, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Hold on. Who can I run to? That's what the fuck I'm talking about. The, oh, yeah. Who can I run to? He's the reason that I didn't know that was a gospel song. Apparently, they're talking about running to Jesus, 
had no idea. Apparently, Escape, yes. they, they made it about running to some, some nigga beat. It was a completely different song, but the gospel song was fire. And, like, he just put me on so much gospel stuff. Shout out to Budgie. And, uh, like I said, interviewed a lot of top tier producers, and I had to interview you because, man, you have worked on some of my favorite projects of this past decade, you know? And I just kind of wanted to dive deep into some of those projects and, you know, if there's any back oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's give some insights, some, some behind the story, like behind the story type shit. Yeah, so Ask away, sir. The, the first one I want to touch on is, I'm going to let you guess. It's a, it's a project that I feel like is one of the more underrated projects, but it's super short and uh, very uh, underappreciated rapper. And you got a couple beats on there. And uh, it's a it's a super duper flawless mixtape to me. It's like nine songs. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. EP. Uh, that should give it away to you. It's an EP. I've done too many joints. G, I'm a stud. <laughs> Untitled EP. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yo, the Haji shit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Super thrash. Shout out to Haji's beats, man. Haji, uh... He, he put me on and put, like, you know, elevated my shit in a certain light where people outside of my initial circle like people I was fucking with like start paying attention to me and I always appreciate him for that I remember we did a joint and he was like I don't usually fuck with no random producers but you know I fucked the ones this shit I think it was on the, uh, the Brooklyn joint hmm. we did and I was like mad long ago that was like I was 16, 17 and him being our future our future's height at that time and him shot me out like that that shit was love and we went on to make a couple more joints but like yeah, no. That, wow. Yeah, untitled joint. That shit even linked me with some other producers that I still fuck with to this day. Yeah. And they even go further back with Haji. The first time I ever heard you was Go by Mellow High. That was my first time ever hearing about you at all. And that was just such a like insane beat to me. And I was like, I don't know who this nigga is, but this nigga is in a different bag. And I've been rocking with you ever that, since. That shit was fun to make. Uh, I remember... The, when they had tweeted it out and Tyler was like who from made this shit this shit's tight and I was like that's me you like, oh, shit you know I'm like and shit bunks is like you know that nigga Tyler is fucking amazing yeah. and I've been a fan of him since since Bastard since like the first take did it and so it was wild to, to see I went to like our future's first New York show and see their rise and, and see how everyone has grown from that group. It's been, it's been amazing to see. So to have respect to people that, you know, you you look up to or, you know, respect, it, it, it's confident. You know, I'm not really one to search for validation. But I do I do want the respect of people. Oh, that's, that's the thing I want. Like, you respect me, leave me alone. Like, I don't care about validation or anyone's like, oh, he's good. Like, nah, but like, gonna respect this you gonna respect the craft and so to see people do that it, it, it's confidence like I bet I know I'm on the right path I know I'm making this certain quality music it's reassuring yeah. nah I mean you putting up you putting up 81 on niggas bro there's no way niggas can't respect you you feel <laughs> me so it's, it's, it'd be crazy if they don't um, I guess the, before we keep going about like some of these backstories or whatever, I kind of want to pivot a little bit because we're talking about Odd Future. I just thought about Earl, and I'm familiar. I'm curious if you're familiar with like the niggas he be working with, like with Navy Blue and uh, Madani and Mike and all them niggas. I don't know if you ever tapped yeah. in with them boys or not, but I feel I, like I'm, you will be crazy with them. Shout out to my boy Mavi. Shout out to Mavi. That nigga's crazy. Yeah, nah, me and Mavi been cooking a little bit over the past year. Should be some things coming out. My boy made that thing. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I peeped that that wave in that circle has kind of like blossomed, and it's really amazing because it started, you know, that's like a younger crowd. It's like 19, 20 year olds is, oh. is tapped in with soul samples and and just you know real like thought provoking raps and shit. So it's like it's ill to see that. My boy Maxo is probably like my one of my favorite rappers right now. He's hard Max, Maxo's fucking cold, G. He got a certain wisdom and presence to his shit. It's like it's it. You can you can tell it's made with with a certain love and, and you know dedication to his craft. Yeah, them, them niggas. It's like I think that's like a 
a, a, a good thing you said, like the wisdom that they present. Like one of my favorites out that group is the nigga Sage Navy Blue, and I just feel like when I listen to like his music or just a lot of their music, it feel like them niggas is tapped in with like slave ancestors, bro. It's like them niggas is tapped into a whole different realm, and it's just so interesting to hear it's like spi- it's spiritual. It's spiritual, bro. It's spiritual, man. And I don't know. I think it's cool to just hear young black men kind of be vulnerable in a different way, you know. And not just talk about the same thing all the time and just be vulnerable to the listeners. And I don't know. I just think that's really, really cool. Um, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, my fault. You, you got broken for a second. But, uh, uh, hold on. You coming back. You coming back. Uh, you hear me still? Yeah. I hear Damn, yeah. Your screen went like black. Okay, there you is. You came back. You screen black out for a second, but um, but yeah, um, I guess kind of going back to just some of my favorite tapes that you was produced. Um, of course, I got to bring up you and Rich, man. You and Rich, y'all got a classic mixtape, bro. Polo Sporting Grounds. I, I mean that that mixtape, bro. It's like I don't know if y'all were like. It feel like y'all both tapped into just two different things because Rich, I feel like he's a very versatile guy. Like he could do that type of rap, then he could rap over like a whole bunch of future beats. Bro. You know what I'm saying? He's crazy. So I think talented as fuck. I think yeah. people kind of pigeonhole him to one style and want him to be one of them. But it's like, how many niggas you know could give you like a Ghostface, Rock Marciano, classic, you know, sound that album like that, and turn around and do, you know, more dark, grittier stuff, and then even then pivot from that and then turn up and make future types like. The nigga, the nigga versatile. If he don't want to be pigeonholed into, uh, you know, confined to one style, that's shit more power to him. Like, there's a lot of artists is just, fuck it, they got to make this same song over and over again because yeah. that's all they know how to do. It's like, nah, fuck that. All of a sudden, we made that shit when we was young. Like, niggas was like 18, 19. Like, I don't think, shit, I don't even make the same. It's funny because people ask me, like, yo, can I get something like, you know, from ten years, like five, seven. I'm like, nah, I don't even make shit like that no yeah. more. G, like, so. I feel like it's just uh, that was one of them things where kind of going back to sports, like y'all in Arizona, like listening like to Marmalade Sky, like that beat and the way he flowed over that. Like a lot of those beats, a lot of beats you produce in general are not easy to rap over, in my opinion. Like when I listen to them, I'm like, eh, this isn't the most easiest thing to rap over. Then I always wanted to challenge artists mm. to kind of really really rap uh i don't really make music you can kind of slack like slack off yeah no rapper's gonna be able to just like you know half ass day first they really gotta spit they gotta find that pocket they really gotta get in their bag so that that's always that's always the thing i always want to challenge people to to be better and so you gotta give them the goods it's like the beat's so good that if you if you half ass it you're not gonna sound you ain't gonna sound good on it you then be like, ah, now nah, just instrumental it, like fuck it, like take my verse off, like I want people to like, and it, I've come into that uh, situation a couple times where I've like I, I send people beats and I realize the beat might be too intimidating for the artist, mm. like they might not find that pocket just because they don't they wouldn't know how to tap in with the sound like all the way. They're like, damn, like how am I going to approach this? And so, fuck it. I'll, I'll live by that, die by that. I'm not gonna change or uh, accommodate. I'm gonna keep making high, high quality shit, and now I gotta have people meet me at that high quality level. I think it's cool to hear niggas take up that challenge, like Absol and Short Sermons. Like the way he was rapping on that was crazy. Like the well, niggas take stuff up. Crazy time. We was. Yeah. I remember <laughs> around Wonder Kid. We was we made bad guy, good guy. We we're and Absol. We was at like. Them that started selecting the show is serious XM, yeah. We went up there, they freestyled, and then we went and made fucking bad guy, good guy. Shout out to Absol, man. Every time I've uh, come across that, man, good peoples, really good peoples. Shout out to Ab. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, that whole tape is crazy. And then just going on, I guess, just difficult beats to rap over. I think one of the most just like craziest beats that it was like a very weird. Uh, com- it was a very weird person to put on this beat, but the fact that he like slid it and the nigga was slide, I'm like, yo, this is wow. When you produce 52 seconds for currency, I think that is like one of the most like I would have never expected him to get on that beat, but 
but that showed me like damn currency is like a rapper rapper so it's not really surprising to me but still just would have never expected him to rap over that beat so i was curious like, when you made that beat did you think oh this is a currency type beat because that's not what i would have thought at all <clears throat> yeah no nah, i mean i i was listening to a lot of the alchemist shit that him and spittle was doing and i kind of wanted to tap into that vein where it's mm. like not necessarily you know something with drums on it but like a really grandiose loop. sometimes you want shit to sound like a soundtrack or yeah. feel like a movie kind of putting it in the perspective of like a film type situation so it's like you pull those vibes out of somebody kind of make it feel like an intro or feel like a a scene from a movie you kind of pull a different kind of connection from somebody a different kind of vibe from somebody yeah. was there a movie you think about Oh shit! I be thinking about films that don't exist. <laughs> like, how do you make a soundtrack to something that's not even out yet? Like, how do you, you know, how do you paint a picture for somebody or leave enough room on the canvas for somebody to paint that picture? And so that's that's my job. Is that something you think about? Like, you like want to score films like later in your life? Yeah, I mean, I I've scored the for when Complex did a low life documentary. I scored it with beats. Hmm. Um. I definitely want to score a movie one day. Definitely. Have you ever watched a movie and you thought, like, I, I would have had something really crazy for this? The whole soundtrack I could have did. Sometimes, but not necessarily. Mm. Like, uh, what's that corn? Not corny. It was really cheesy, but it was a really beautiful movie. It was like Issa Rae and McKeith had, like, a rom com. And Robert Glasper fucking laced the soundtrack, too. Like, mm. Laced it. I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to do some shit like this. And, yeah, nah. So, not necessarily, like, I, I won't, like, see a movie and be like, I mean, I could have snapped on this. Like, more so, like, inspiring. Like, okay, I want to do something like this. I want to, you know, team up with a young, like, filmmaker and, and, you know, put some shit together or, or curate the soundtrack where I put just the, the right fucking Weather Channel song uh, <laughs> or, you know, little de- little shit, little details. Yeah. That's hard. I didn't even know Robert Glasper was uh, scoring films. That's hard. I'm I'm at the uh, watch the movie just for the soundtrack at that point. That's hard. Yeah, nah, he snapped. That, that shit's very it. That shit can like make or break a movie. Like, yeah. a really good soundtrack can make a, a decent movie. It's really, really good. Nah, that's a fact. And I mean, <laughs> the way you described this movie, it doesn't like the greatest movie, but I'm pretty sure the soundtrack probably took it to the next level where you was like, a hey, movie not that yeah, great. Man. It's a rom com. It's, like, it's cute, but it's like the soundtrack is like, oh shit, shit, cool as hell. Like, damn it, listen for the soundtrack more than I was watching the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, that's crazy. And I mean, like I said, the the way that you flip samples and turn them and do crazy stuff is I'm not a producer, so when I hear producers do that, I like uh, I praise it. You know, I can't play football at the same level that a uh, fucking Antonio Brown does, so I admire it. You know, so to say, I can't produce at the level you do i don't produce at all but if i did still be able to produce the level you do so i admire it you know and i i i have this question at for you as a producer because i heard something and i i don't know if this has ever been done before so i'm curious if you can answer this question for me um What's that? listen to a paul wall song uh it's called swinging in the rain he was rapping over a sample about rain right or he was rapping over a sample about being in love and the song was about being in love with his car so i was like all right that's cool listen to the remix the remix has a completely different beat but this a new sample and the sample is about rain so both of the songs the sample has something directly correlating to the theme of the song and i i'd never i've never heard that before so i was curious if you've heard that before with a remix and the original two different samples with the samples directly correlate to the song I mean, there's definitely a couple of joints that kind of my, uh, I wouldn't name a big grip joint. He had flipped the, uh, the Al Green shit. And he was, like, he would fit the sample into his, like, his verse. And so mm-hmm. inside the sample said something, he would let the sample say it, and then he would continue on, like, filling the blanks. That's something that's, like, it's, it's honestly it's pretty interesting to, to do and manipulate the sample where you yeah. need that sample say something. But, uh, or have it sound like it's saying something so that the artist can, you know, like shit, the new, uh, that Freddie gives Alchemist shit, the Look At Me joint. Hmm. Look at me, look at me. And the whole song is called Look At Me. So it's yeah. like, 
you know, it, it's a it's an interesting thing. Our job is to really like provide this canvas for rappers. And sometimes you leave a little detail so that they can be like, oh, okay. It's almost like leaving outlines for them to paint. Hmm. Do paint by numbers, kind of like force their hand almost in a sense to to rap along with a you know do a melody with and and kind of like push their hand a little bit. And it usually works out pretty great. Like it. it be cold is saying something already to rap like oh okay oh I bet it, it's almost like a launching pad for them they can start filling in the blanks from there and like you said that shit turned out pretty fine <laughs> no I've always looked at that as like a producer rap relationship is like uh, almost like an equation it's like y'all set up the equation now you just gotta solve it and then it's complete and that's the way I always looked at that so yeah I think uh, I think like samples and manipulating samples that always be crazy to me and like I said, just going back to just following you on Twitter and just looking at things you say about music, I see you say a lot. You got a lot of hot takes. Like I feel like you say a lot of things that are not like the most popular thing. Uh, <laughs> have you always Man, been like that with music? What up? What, what I, I say? What I don't. I, I actually don't. I I I was trying to find some. I I follow you. I wouldn't think about interviewing you like five months ago, but every time I see you, I'm like, this nigga is wilding with this. Like, this is, a, this is an outrageous take. But I didn't. I don't have anything screenshot because I couldn't find anything. I really couldn't remember anything. But yeah. I'm pretty sure because I mean I have hot takes. Like one of my crazies, I got like a crazy Boosie Jay Z hot take. But I mean, <laughs> you wild. I wouldn't have put them niggas in the same sentence. No, nah, you would even. You would even. You, you got to hear the hot take, then you'd be like, okay. Basically, the moral of the story is I was uh I was live streaming one day and I guess they were talking about Jay Z uh debut album. I am a South nigga, so I grew up on Boosie. So I think I said something like I prefer Boosie's debut album, and then it just like all that went downhill from there. And that's just like a that's the thing that nigga tried to crucify. That's the regional shit. It's like if you yeah. grew up with a certain. So like my my parents. They're both from Chicago. We went to HBCUs. And so my mom was at, my mom was a fam. My dad went to Jackson. They ended up really fucking with Outcast and shit like mm. that because of it. They was in the South. Yeah. It's like my mom had me at an Outcast concert when I was two because she was down at FAMU and they was touring the South. So mm. like I, I'm somewhat biased for Outcast. Hmm. But at the same time, like, my mom's a big Wu-Tang fan, so, like, she had me listen to Wu-Tang. So, like, there's certain things where you just, like, innate to or just, you know, because the region, because the parents and stuff like that. So, like, you prefer the Boosie debut album? Shit, you must have grew up with the Boosie debut album. Okay. I fucking love Blueprint, and I love TakeOver when I love Ether. Hmm. And part of that is somewhat biased. I mean, also... Because, well, takeover beat is way more fire than the ether beat. <laughs> so it's just, you know, it's, it's little things, little nuances, little biases. Sometimes, sometimes a hot take just be a, a very valid opinion. And you just gotta respect it sometimes. There's some outrageous ones where niggas try to justify it. And I'm like, nah, fam, you just saying some shit to be outrageous. Hey, but like some regional, I can't knock on regional shit, but I definitely keep niggas be tweaking and saying some wild shit just because. They get a rise out of people I'm like fam you are an instigator <laughs> hey, man, speaking of either shout out to Ron Brown man I got you no so. not shout out to <laughs> no shout out to Ron Brown no. oh, not shout out Ron Brown that was a dark time in hip hop yo that nigga man oh my gosh <laughs> Bro, every time I get on Twitter and I see a A-Rap money like tweet it never makes me not laugh bro like that that was a time. That was an era, bro. I don't know why that was an era, but it, it was, man. That was a dark time. Like you that, said. Was, that was like post ether. He had like pop champagne jumping out the window. A red money. He had a little decent little summer. A lot of a lot of scents on New York rap, <laughs> and I was not a fan. Not a fan at all. Oh my gosh, man! Hey, it's it's crazy because niggas like to say, "Oh, southern niggas kill hip hop." Hey, low key, I think Ron Brown's about to kill hip hop. I mean, if you're gonna go down that route, man. That... Ron Brown's definitely. It was a culture reset in a in a bad way. That's a fact, man. That is a. Big it was thing. like they doubled. It was like niggas doubled down on the Jiggy era, and was that shit didn't like the hookah 
lounge era. <laughs> that is a hookah lounge song. That is a hey, that that might be the most accurate take <laughs> that I've ever heard. And uh, like this, like Dip said, Jim, like those guys went from like heat making shit to, and I almost felt like it was an attempt to keep up with southern niggas, mm. like Ron Brown's kind of production, like. Mm. That shit, I don't know what they was doing. Because there's such a, a a change from what was working for them so well. Yeah. Shout out to Heat Makers. I interviewed him this year. What a what an elite producer. That guy's crazy, man. He made this guy classics. I had a, I interviewed him. At the, so I had a fan question. Somebody asked, why is your name Heat Makers if it's only one of you? And uh, he said, <laughs> he said, because I, cause I do the work. Here's what he said, because I do the work of two. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's hard. <laughs> that's hard. Yeah, that thing is funny. I, I, I fuck with heat makers, but um, I don't want to keep it for too long, man. I uh, you probably got two hundred thirty freaking beats to make. But before we get out of here, I do have a question about sports, and I want to ask you about the bubble. I want to ask you who do you think taking it home? Where do you think it's going? How do you think the bubble is gonna? If you think it's gonna last, what's your thoughts on it, man? Um. <laughs> I'm not really a fan of the NBA coming back on these terms and conditions. I think it'll make for good TV. I haven't really watched like live TV or like a sports event in forever because obviously there's been no sports or whatever. But like, yeah. it's gonna be interesting, to say the least. I think the Lakers probably had the best chance. Uh, I think a, a LeBron on four months of rest is a dangerous LeBron. Yeah. Um, and you add in someone like J.R. Smith, who is an amazing shot maker, despite what people say about him, the nigga is a great player. Shit. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, I think it's going to be interesting to say the least. I think it's going to be uh, some tweaks to it in terms of like players coming back with that much, that much rest, players being rusty. Uh, doesn't that shit start like today? Uh, no. Like tomorrow? It start the 31st. First, start the thirtieth. Thirty first. I thought something about the twenty. I saw something about the twenty something. I was like, for real? Nah, so, it's the thirtieth. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, they know it's gonna be. It's gonna be ill to see. It, it, it's gonna be like, I find it twofold. Where it's like, it's gonna be somewhat of a distraction. It's also gonna be some type, some form of relief. Just to see niggas hooping, like get niggas hope that some shit can get back to normal soon. And the players are advocating for you know causes that. I feel like are more important than basketball right now, and to see that is 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 great to see certain athletes using their platform for good. So we shall see. Hey, I'm kind of I'm kind of iffy about it, but I think we'll be I think we'll be decent. I'm definitely on the same wave of you. I definitely was on the Kyrie side of things, where I was like, I'm rocking with Kyrie, but apparently they're coming back anyway. So I guess I gotta rock with my Heat. Shout out to the Heat. Hopefully the Heat uh can can take it. Uh, Y'all yeah, got a great young team. Man, Y'all man. gonna be decent in a couple of years. Yeah, them them uh, they got Kendrick Nunn. And he's Chicago nigga too, ain't he? Yeah, I think, mm-hmm. I think Kendrick Nunn, Chicago nigga. Yeah, we definitely got some 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 suitors on that team. So yeah, shout out to the Heat. Um, but yeah, like I said, man, they want to keep it for too long. So if you got anything else you got to say before we get out of here, man, um, let it be known. Uh, Lord of the West coming soon. I I can't get more details on that. But yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna hold uh-huh. you. Bro. Man, a nigga need that beat. Or is that beat going to be on the album, man? We Niggas need that beat we just produced, man. Maybe, maybe. Nah, we can't maybe that, bro. Niggas need that beat, It's a maybe. Bro. It's a maybe. Can't hold it. It's a maybe. <laughs> oh, man. Well, hey, for everybody watching right now, I appreciate you guys. Until next time, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters gonna hate. Players gonna play. And y'all holla at your boy.